You feel like you can have everything under control. You're ahead of the aircraft procedurally. You know what's going on. You're in a good place. And then it all starts. I kind of describe to my students that IFR cross countries is, um, particularly longer ones, I use the, the term um, an hour of boredom with nine minutes of terror at the end. Um, and that's what it feels like. You're in the descent, you're on your way to maybe a hold or to start the approach. And then typically now someone gets airborne, someone taxis out and you've got to manage and deal with, okay, I've now got circuit traffic joining the party. And it becomes, uh, yeah, quite a high workload very quickly. So what is an IFR approach? And what is happening in the cockpit? Well, a lot's happening in the cockpit. Um, and you've got to remember what we can't always see outside. So we're unsighted. We're relying on our instrumentation um, to guide us. An IFR approach is an imaginary road that brings us to a place um, safely, um, avoiding the terrain, um, so we can hopefully break visual and then continue the approach to land. Um, I think in the most simple terms, it's just that. Um, we follow imaginary lines in the sky and our equipment is telling us where these lines are. You have to know how to read the equipment, you have to know how to set the equipment up and you have to be able to predict what the equipment is going to do and show you. So the pilot in the cockpit is um, extremely busy at times. We can't move freely, we are on that road, we are flying to waypoints and it's all um, promulgated and this is what we're doing. We're on predetermined tracks and we are descending in cloud, potentially into a busy um, airfield environment. The IFR pilot might be limited to the, the runway they can use, whereas a, a VFR pilot has got a choice and could maybe be doing crosswinds or just convenient to use a crossing runway. Um, again, we're limited to what we can do um, until we break visual, then we've got a bit more um, flexibility. I think, you know, I want VFR pilots to understand what the IFR pilot is. Not how hard we're working, really, but the fact that we're, we're coming from this direction and we're not, we don't have the flexibility of movement. I think that's probably the biggest one. And we want good communication and we hope to give good communication to them as well. Um, most of the, the stressful times that I've had instructing um, IFR have been around communication, not getting what you want when you need it. So um, for me, you know, comms is a big one. We've all got our rules. We hopefully all know our rules and how we're going to operate. But if we can communicate clearly to each other, um, then it's just so much simpler, so much easier. We know that there is VFR traffic under the cloud operating perfectly legally, doing their thing. Maybe the cloud base is at a thousand feet and there you've got your circuit aircraft doing their thing under there. Um, we are going to be talking to those aircraft. We're going to be announcing where we are geographically, what our intentions, we want to give the time that we're planning to make the approach. And then it really comes down to mutual understanding of each other's movements. Um, the VFR pilot um, operating in an airfield that has an IFR approach, hopefully has been well schooled in their training to understand what the IFR um, aircraft can do, um, where the approach is going to be coming in from. Um, hopefully they've got enough understanding that they understand that we can't move freely. So it's helpful if they're aware of us, um, both just generally, because they understand how the operations at their airfield work. Um, and then they can help us to stay apart. A good radio call, a clear radio call, concise, well formatted, delivered, just is a game changer for any pilot I know clearly where that person is, what their intentions are and how they're going to manage themselves. And they seem to understand what I'm doing. It's simple. Where you are, how high you are, what are you doing, where are you going and what time you're going to do it. Um, kind of basic, really. Remember that the IFR pilot doesn't necessarily have or would have the local knowledge to have VFR reporting points. They're using IFR charts, IFR plates, um, we're using IFR references. So what I like is the uh, is to use the airfield that we're tracking to or from, distances from that. So in terms of the the report, the, the radio calls to a to an airfield, and if I use probably the most the one I'm most familiar with, which is Timaru, and I Timaru traffic, Tango Zulu Zulu, IFR Park Navia, 
got to let these people know that everyone know that we are operating to that set of rules. So we're going to have that tagged in there. Our fire park Navia, 22 miles northeast of the field, 6,000 feet, shortly to descend to 4,000 feet to enter the Bidney Hold, 10 miles northeast of the field. I can't really give you any more information than that. That's where I am, altitude I'm at, where I'm going, what I'm going to descend to, and then I'm tagging in an IFR hold, but I'm given the location of that IFR hold relative to the airfield. If a VFR pilot isn't certain of the position or the intentions of an IFR aircraft, we want them to come back to us and say, hey, you know, what, can you confirm what you're doing? And we'll then give them as much information as they need so they can be satisfied of what we're doing, comfortable with what we're doing. And again, now everyone's on the same page. Um, yeah, don't stay quiet. We want to know that you understand what we're doing in the same way we need to know that you understand what we're doing. We're all in the same space together. Um, if someone's in doubt, you've got to fill that hole and not have any doubts. The responsibility of the IFR traffic in joining the circuit is to sequence in safely with the traffic, which is at the, at the airfield. Um, we, IFR doesn't automatically gain you right away. Um, we all need to work together. Um, there is a point where, you know, once we're on final approach, that the IFR, if the weather conditions allow or as such, that the IFR aircraft um, does gain some priority. But well before then, um, the IFR pilot um, will be looking to have understood and managed and communicated with the, the traffic. So the IFR pilot on making the approach into a busy airfield um, needs to be aware that it's their responsibility to sequence in safely with any traffic. And there is some negotiation required around that. You have to communicate with that traffic. You have to ascertain where they are. You have to think about where they're going to be. Um, and you want them to understand where you are and what you're doing. IFI pilots still need to look outside. Um, it's a given, it's a must. Um, just because we're IFR doesn't mean that we, you know, we don't have to worry about what's happening around us. ADSB, um, TCAS systems, fantastic. They aid us, but they're not the be all and end all. Um, as we know, not everyone's going to have that technology. So we have to rely on communication and, uh, um, dare I say it, the Mark One eyeball. It's really about building up a mental picture of what's happening around you, the airfield, and understanding the movements of the traffic. You can't rely on the technology is very useful um, and it aids you, but it's not the be all and end all.